Just yes, one second. I'm just trying to find a link to it. Okay, so guys, we just we just had a few technical issues. Um, um it's disappeared. Um, the <laughs> it's YouTube video disappeared. So I've got to go find you guys. I've lost it completely. Okay. Live there. So we have um, a new. We've, he's just quickly set up a new live. So he's going to. Oh, I need to find the other one now. Give me a second. Chuck everybody across. <laughs> Jacob's found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's just. Uh, Oopsie. I've got to try and find the old one now. <laughs> so let's so you can let everybody know where we are. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, These things happen. These things happen. We'll just give a few minutes, wait for everybody to uh, come across. <laughs> he set up one live using uh, OBS, and all of a sudden, as he record went to press record, it disappeared. So, na and he couldn't find it again. And it, it is literally disappeared out of the recording. So he's had to set up a new one to then obviously bring everybody across. So just give him a few minutes. We just had to. Put, well, we've moved the live over. Oops. <laughs> oh. oh, computers, they have a mind of their own. They really do have a mind of their own, don't they? Yeah, well, apparently at the moment we've only found two of us have found us. Oh, okay. Okay. Everybody's still tapping the fingers, going, Where are they? <laughs> Never mind, eh? Oh, it is what it is. Yeah, what happened? A few minutes, yeah. Uh, let me just see if I can... I'm glad I don't do computers every day. I think I'd have to strangle them. They drive me crazy. Oh. What's that one? Is that the old one? Yeah, we're still live on that the one. Old one. No, yeah. that one. I'm still yeah. talking to myself. It's fine. Just rambling on about nothing. <laughs> Drinking coffee. Keeping my hands warm. Just see if that takes it. Oopsie. That does just, it now, yes. Yeah, he's still just sorting some things out. So It's live, he's just yeah, uh, it's letting it's everybody live. else know. Yeah. Yeah, there was a few people sat waiting. So. <laughs> uh, mm. You should be able to paste that in there, shouldn't you? Yep. That's it. Just put, um, put new live. That's it, just put new one. Maybe it doesn't want to do it. No, it doesn't want to do it now. No. <laughs> and it, te technology is a pain in the butt, and then it's even worse when you're in a rush trying to sort something out. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. Never mind, we'll start again. Have we got a few now? Ah. <sighs> Uh, well, we we have a few. I've just posted in the uh, group as well. Okay. <laughs> have you got your mic on? Uh, yeah, you have. Yep. That's right, no cursing. <laughs> no cursing and swearing. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, dear me. I don't think everybody's found the way across, have they yet? No. Should we just start? Wait a few more minutes. No, the, t the uh, Team Hob Life member for life says Misfit t shirt. Oh, yeah, Misfit. Is it heavy metal band? No, it's a. Uh... No, it's Dremel's Misfit ma Makers. Um, we are part of the Dremel team. Um, there's quite a few of us, and uh, they are, we are a bunch of makers that just make random stuff. Um, and we make it look good, and we make it with Dremel. So we're just c called the Dremel's Misfit Makers. Uh, bitten, we've uh, we've had a little bit of a mess up on uh, the film side of things, and the the stream ended quickly. Technical issues, technical issues. There was a bit of a glitch in the uh, software. He pressed went to press record, and he recorded just for a split second, and then disappeared again. When he went back to find it, he couldn't find it. So yeah, it went live, and then switched itself yeah, off it again. Yeah, it just switched itself off. So he had to make a new live, and of course, technical issues. They're always um, the worst. <laughs> just when you don't want them but uh, yeah so what I'm going to do is we are just going to get started I think so I'll just wink your coffee all right so this series we are going for these uh, Converse All-Stars 
Now the photo was already black and white, so I've just kept it as that. I quite like that, the black and white photo. Um, we have, I've already transferred my design down onto the wood using uh, carbon paper and just taped the actual design. Now in the Google Drive, you did have a line drawing. The line drawing is for those of you that weren't confident with transferring from an actual photograph. So that's just, it's just there, if that's what, that's what you prefer, just, just there to aid you in transferring. So what we're going to do is I'm going to flip that up and we are going to start with, we have the Peter Child's machine and I have a teeny tiny spoon shader just here. What I want to do is I'm going to pop that in there, screwdriver. So just unscrewing one side and then the other. Pop that one out. And pop this one in. And just screw that down. What I'm going to do is we're going to start with the um, spoon shader because we're going to go for the tiny dark parts. We're just going to fill in the tiny dark parts today. So I've got the Peter Charles machine. And I'm currently going to set it to a four and a half, and then I'm going to switch it on. So just giving it a few seconds just to heat up. It normally take about 10 seconds to heat up. Now, what we're going to do is go all in between the laces with the dark parts, and we're going to go darkest first. So I'm just going to use the scrumbling motion, which is the circular motion. Let me just... Bring that in. Can you switch that back again for me? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, he's playing with the technical bits on the, his side. I'm going to move that across there. So I'm going to bring that in a little bit further. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is going to start down at the bottom. We're going to work our way up in the uh, darker areas. I'm just going to use the scrumbling motion, which is tiny circular motions and we are going to be using light pressure we do not want to be pressing into this wood so we're just going to start just by moving and filling in that dark shadow just where that part comes down for the laces i'm not quite sure what that part of the shoe is called but it's, it's that part there so i want to um be quiet a minute pass it over to Phil so we can say hello to everybody. Wow. We have, I don't think everybody found us again. No. I hope so. Uh, today joining you, you have Bitten. Hi Bitten. You have Jacob from Jacked Up Leatherworks. Hi Jacob. You have John Daniel. Hi John Daniel. Uh, you have JP. Hey JP, bye. JP Woodwork. And you have Team Hard Life member for life. Hi. <laughs> and you have Billy have Russell. You, have, have, have you got a shortened name for that one? <laughs> <laughs> we have a Billy Russell. Oh, hi, Billy Russell. Hope you're all doing okay today. So just doing the circular scrumbling motion, very, very light pressure. Not putting any pressure on this pen at all. Just so it Jamie around. says, sorry. sorry if it's been asked before, but what do you do with the wood before you start? Grit, sanded, etc. Okay, so what I've done is I've sanded the wood. Um, it's What does the drum sander do? 120. 120. So Phil preps the blanks and he sands them to about 120. Then what I do is I come in with 240 and then a 320 just so you've got nice smooth surface. It just enables the pen tip to glide over the surface of the wood rather than snagging in the grain. Right, so Team Hard Life, his name is Robert. Hi Robert. <laughs> and Jacob says I've brought over my fishing team. Nice, <laughs> nice mate. <laughs> You can bring over as many as you like. 
So there we go. Just still just doing nice circular motions just to lay down that first sort of layer of burn. Now with this it kind of, it goes in a curve this little shadow does. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to go and do that. And Robert says uh, he does half circle when I shade in my drawers. Cool. Cool. It's it's each to their own really. And Andrew from AGK has found us. Hey up Andrew. How you doing? <laughs> Sorry, Phil messed up. Yeah, technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> All these technical difficulties. Yeah, he uh, went to go live and uh, it went live just for a split second and then um, the software just glitched and uh, we ended up uh, not live. So <laughs> we didn't well, find it. It glitched to going live. Yeah. So... That's why he didn't know you were live. No, I didn't know. So we're just going to take that over. So we're going to just use the, um, I can't think of the word now. I want to say sweeping motion. We'll use sweeping. That'll do for me today. You'll be okay. non-technical again. Yeah, I'm non-technical. I am not technical, guys. I'll show you how to do it, and I'll show you what I'm doing, and I'll explain to the best of my knowledge, but I have not got any technical knowledge whatsoever. So I do apologise. If anybody's got any better terms, then go for it. So just pulling the burn across there where the lace, the lace actually twists just there where it's darker. There we go. And then we're going to pull down from that. There we go to create that shadow just underneath that part of the lace. Oh, so Andrew says he was stuck over there. Yeah. Found it on the Facebooks. Hashtag Phil's fault. Yeah, it was hashtag <laughs> Phil's fault. And Billy's giving you a sub. I love woodworking stuff and I'm pretty decent at it myself. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We do have um, a Facebook group if uh, any of you guys want to join in and come and show off your pyrography work. Mm, more the merrier. Very welcome. And Jamie says hashtag Shug's fault even if he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. It's always Shug's fault. So just pulling from the burn into that part of the dot. It kind of goes, sweeps around. So we're going to pull down. Yeah. Rob's just realised what you're doing. Rob? Yeah, Team Hard Life. Right. Just realising you're burning the drawing in wood. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just assume that everybody knows when they come, when they come over. You just assume that everybody knows. I do apologise. You just thought you were coming to watch a crazy lady with technical difficulties, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Billy says my stuff is mainly sharp cabinets, furniture, stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, we do a few bits like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But these lives are more Kez's artistic ability. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> right, so we're going to go... We've done that bit there. Um, what we're going to do is go in between that lace there, because that's really dark. So I like to do the darkest parts first first because it's then easier to pull from your darkest parts into your mid-tones so I'm just using the sweeping motion again swinging motion sweeping motion I just realized we haven't put a reference picture in either not my day today is it no not really yeah, my day. Better look next time, darling. Did your ears not work again? <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <coughs> so we've got a nice dark part in there. And then we have a nice dark part in this part of the lace just here. So Billy says, I wish I could shade wood like that. You can. You can. That's why you're here. I'm going to show you how, and then you can try it, and then show me what you've done. 
which is pretty cool. And uh, JP says, I've literally just pulled those spoon shaders out of my coat pocket and really? bought a Harrogate. That was November oh you bought Oh, my God. Then. You mean Vicky hasn't um, stolen your, uh, your pyro machine yet? And... Uh, Anna Kay's arrived as well. Hi, Anna. I had some network issues, so a little late. Don't worry, we had more than that. We had technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> we had fill issues. We had, we had technical issues, so don't worry about that. You're not actually late. We're just starting with the dark parts first, Anna. And... Uh, then we'll move on to the mid-tones because it's easier to blend your burns from darker to lighter because your pen naturally gets cooler as it moves across the wood for the longer period of time. Andrew says, come on, Phil. Are you having one of those days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's having a Phil moment. It's like a senior moment, but it's with Phil instead. <laughs> I normally don't have them with the technical stuff on the computer. <laughs> no, you don't normally. You're pretty good, actually. So, just using a mixture of pulling the burn and circular motions to fill in. Just laying down this first section of burn all the way up these laces first. Here we go. Coming along just nicely. We have a little bit just here, don't we? It's just, I keep looking at my reference photo and I'm working out where I am on the uh, photo in the laces. So Rob says, do you always, do you always start with the dark first then shade out, just like drawing? Yes, yes. I do with the, when I'm, when I'm not doing portraits, when I'm doing things like this, then yeah, I do. I start with the darkest part first. When I'm doing portraits, I'll always start with the eyes first because um, the eyes are basically the windows to the song. And if you get them wrong, everything else can look really off and wrong. But generally with um, things like this, then yes. And Jamie says he's been having a senior moment since he was born. When he said since he was a toddler, but... That's not hard. So just filling in where all these darker parts are. It takes time, but it will start coming together. Um, where are we now there? There's a line just there when it kind of comes around. To that part there, the part of the laces. There we go. Still not very much pressure on this um, pen. Just going to go down the side of this, these bits here. These are just where the canvas is of the uh, shoe. Just because it's in a bit of a, it's a bit of a shadow under there, so we'll get them bits in. Yeah, Rob agrees with you. It's a true start with the eye first. Mm, yeah. It, well, if you mess it up, then you've only got a little bit to sand off. That's the way I look at it. And JP says, "Eyes are the window to the soul." Kes quoting Shakespeare. Mm, no. <laughs> no, I didn't do Shakespeare. <coughs> so, yeah, yeah for you guys that have only just joined the first time here, Kez does uh, a series of these 
this is the third in the series uh, where we start at the beginning and work all the way through. Yeah, so each week we will do an hour. Um, we aim to have them done by 10 weeks, so it's 10 hours. They are burn-alongs if you wish to burn along with me. If not, you can just come and make fun and have a laugh and relax for an hour. And Ward Wilson from the west coast of Arizona has joined us. Hey, Ward, how are you doing? I just realised I posted the links to the live on um, Facebook and YouTube. And, uh, not YouTube. Um, and they're Instagram, all wrong. And they're all the wrong ones. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, eh? So, what I'm going to do from there, I think, is... The wrong ones today, if all your yeah. work is burning drawings into wood. Um... Mostly, mostly. That's what this channel is about. Um, sort of. <laughs> n mostly. This channel is about that. Um, but I do, I do paint. Um, we do a lot of woodwork. Phil does a lot of furniture making. Although he doesn't show it on camera. So we do a bit of all sorts. Because also does scroll saw work. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I like scroll saw work. So we have actually got that, it's quite dark, down that section just there. So just making sure adding all these dark bits in nicely. And there we go. No, you got that one wrong, wrong, Jamie. What's that? Phil is super talented. He is, he is, he just doesn't, <laughs> he um just doesn't uh, think so. I won't be able to do half of what I do do without him. And there we go. And Billy says pretty much all of us from Jacob's team are from South Texas on the coast. Nice. I've not been to Texas yet. The furthest down we've been is Missouri, which is pretty much in the middle, really, isn't it? Now, oh, Andrew just reposted it for you. Yes, thank you, Andrew. It You're did just pop up on my um, iPad. Thank you very much. Much appreciated, mate. So we're still just filling in all these dark areas. Oh, I was on this bit, want to finish this bit first. I do lose where I am regular, I do apologise guys. I'm just filling that bit actually. Left a little bit of the wood showing, so I'm just going to fill that bit in. There we go. So what's everybody been up to this week? I'm not sure on this question. We've got a question from Rob. Yeah. And the heart's in the way, of course. The heart? Yeah. But, uh, what is that rice paper or what kind of paper do you use? Um, I use... Um, oh, hang on. I've got it. I actually use carbon paper to transfer to transfer so we go shiny side down and then um, the shiny side goes underneath this bit hang on you just do that in a second so there we go so the carbon paper goes underneath and the design goes down and then I just literally pencil over the top and then it leaves these lines it leaves them quite dark actually so then I'll go over quick go over with a rubber just to lighten the lines up because even though you know you can rub the lines out mostly it still leaves what is left on the wood now it when you use carbon paper it doesn't rub out fully so as you can see we've still got these lines in here but that's how transfer you can have, there is such thing as the like the paper i think 
Is it done by a razor tip? The um... that you burn through. Yeah, you can burn through. So you can have your design printed on. You put it on, and then you just burn through. I've never, re I've never used that one. So if you've used it, let me know. Um, let me know what it's like. I've never actually used it. Quite often, I'll just get my um, good old pencil out and just, you know, pencil onto the wood. It's just easier when you're showing um somebody that you base i get i get a lot of people say i can't do that because i can't draw so i show them how to print a picture and using the carbon paper method because it's a case of you don't need to be able to draw to be able to do this so that's why i just show it's an advantage them. it is an advantage yeah of course but um i i've, I've known people that uh could do pyrography, but they cannot draw for toffee. So, right, just using the circular motions on this, this is actually the tongue of the shoe. So we're just going to use the circular motions to darken this down nicely. I like the circular motions because it kind of blacks things really quick, or quicker than the other techniques. And gives it a nice, nice coverage. There we go. So I'm not burning this to its blackest yet. I am just burning basically a base layer. So if you think of painting or drawing, you always paint or draw a base layer first. Well, with this burning, that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm just putting the base layer in first. All right, so Jamie wants to know, are you using the side of that tip or the bottom or a combination? I'm using the bottom. So if you imagine you've got, with the spoon shaders, you have got a teaspoon that you make your tea with or coffee. I am using the bottom bowl part just in the circular motions. And Rob says, I was asking because rice paper you can see through and trace, mm. and it should be real good in burning through the paper. Ah, so that's basically like the, the razor tip one then, because you can burn through that. I can only assume that that would be made of some sort of rice paper then. Mm. And he says, I use carbon paper when I do, ta do a tattoo. Ooh, nice. I like tattoos. <laughs> My watch is buzzing at me. It's half past four. My watch buzzes at me every week. Well, every day, actually, to remind me to go and put the dinner on. Otherwise, I forget. So this is still the tongue of the shoe through the laces. So still doing the circular motions just to get a nice coverage on that base layer. We can change the motion as we come towards the laces and we need to be a little bit straighter with the lines as we're up against like the, like the loop of a lace just there. So there we go. Just so we've got some nice edges. I don't generally put any hard lines in. When you're doing realism, hard lines aren't something that I use. I use edges, but not hard lines. Well, Jamie says my mum prints cake pictures on rice paper, so she's got sheets of that. Nice. So know what Jamie will be doing then, if he's stealing this with rice paper. <laughs> so just giving that a little bit more over there, just to darken that down, just a little bit more. We will come back to that bit later because there are shadows on that tongue of that shoe and we will put those shadows in and we'll darken it down even more to make it look more realistic. At the moment, I'm just going to go in just here. There we go. And get these dark parts in here. Uh, Rob says, does that carbon paper you use, does it make a print of the purple line on the wood? 
or do you just go off the paper? It gives you the line here and then um, what I'll do is I'll copy off the picture on the iPad or you can copy off the picture on there. It's, it's up to you whichever one you want to do. Am I reading, am I getting that question right? I don't know. We'll find out whether you've got the, uh, question, uh, the answer right or not. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if I I got the question. <laughs> if not, just, just, just poke me again and I'll, oh, I'll re-answer. <laughs> Basically, she's using the combination of the carbon paper and the original picture to trace the image onto the wood. Yeah, say so I use, I've got this one. This is just normal copy paper. And all I've done is I've made a line drawing from this one. So I've used Procreate to make that into a line drawing because some people can't follow the lines. When they're first starting out or they're not very artistic, they can't f seem to follow the lines. So all I did was make this. Is that, is that what I'm thinking of? And that silly heart's in the way again. Uh -huh. Oh, <coughs> on the screen. Oh, we were on about then. So we're still just darkening these down. Darkening them down, putting the base layers in nicely, using the circular motion. Okay, uh, I got, I'm learning something new, so I got questions, sorry. That's all right, no, go for it. That's Thank what I'm here for. Thank you for answering everything. No, that's fine. My first love is teaching, so all questions are welcome. And Jacob's jump into your uh, aid as well. Yeah. Uh, say so there's silly hearts in the way of the latest message all the time. <laughs> and he's saying Robert is... Can you not most say inside the box a bit? No. Or does that just go with the box? He moves with the box. Oh, uh, it, right. It's like when you put a design pattern and then trace it onto leather. Yeah. And Robert's uh, subscribed to the channel as well. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. So we're still just putting the base layers down on these. We will go over and make these darker. But we're just getting these bases in first. What this is, this line here is actually a line of stitching. Now the line of stitching is white, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over with the burn very lightly and then at the end what I'll do is I'll use my knife and what we'll do is we'll scrape a little bit of the burn away to create the illusion of stitching. But that won't be today. No, that, that's so, normally around 9 or 10 we get into those yeah. stages. So all I'm doing is using the swinging motion backwards and forwards just to add in that lighter section where the stitching is. It's just so I know that when I go darker either side, I, I'm not going to lose where the stitching is because I'm terrible for <laughs> losing where I am and what I'm doing. My brain is just not wired to remember. I do try though. So this just helps me think about where the stitching is. And we've got some stitching just there as well. On this side. Right, so Rob mm, says, do you do there. custom work for people and how much does it start at? Uh, I do do custom work for people and a board like this starts at 250. And keep it classy himself, sir, I, Mr. U Lionheart. Hey, old Huey, how you doing? It was all your fault earlier, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it was all your fault. We're technical issues, and it's all your fault. 
Hope you, you guys have had a good Easter. And the kids. So now I've put a lighter line in for where the stitch is in. I, can, uh, I now know that I can burn dark up to that point. Or darkish. This isn't the final tonal value. It will get darker because that picture is uh, nearly black just there because it's in shadow. Nice circular motions. I'll take a swig of coffee actually. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, so Rob says, do you have an email or how, how do I get hold of you? Um, probably Jacob can point you in the right direction pretty quick. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, just both of them as uh, at Sp uh, Spirit and Bear. Yeah. Or via the uh, link at the top of the chat, there's a link to the Facebook group as well. You can get us through that as well. Yes. Just making sure that these are nice and dark, just for this base layer. And Huey says, all good here. I heard in the wind that some of it was going to be my fault, so I stayed in time out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame you, mate. I would as well. Sat on that naughty step. <laughs> there we go. This is going in nicely now. These... These base layer stages are what I call the ugly stages. And sometimes you can have a piece that sits in the ugly stages for a little while. And it can be a little bit frustrating. But if you keep pushing through, you'll soon come out the other side. And it'll look a lot less ugly once you've put uh, the work in. So don't worry and don't get disheartened if it doesn't look exactly how you want it to look right away. Because... Even mine doesn't look exactly how I want it to look right away. <laughs> you just have to bring lots of patience with you. <laughs> yeah, the theory says on the naughty step. <laughs> on the naughty step, yeah. I wish I could sit on the naughty step for sometimes, you know. Give yourself need, a break. Yeah, give myself a break. Put yourself would, in time out. Yeah, put myself in time out. I wouldn't have to speak to anybody for 40 minutes. That'd be fab. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can speak to me. <laughs> Sounds like heaven. Why do the kids not want to sit there? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't get it. I don't have to listen to anybody. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to think about washing or cooking or anything for 40 minutes. That'd be great. Yeah, Jacob says, Huey, you're always on the naughty steps. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Just adding these darker sections in. Still no pressure on this pen. I can hold this pen all the way up here and still be able to burn because there is literally no pressure. It is just the weight of the pen. If you put a lot of pressure on the pen you will find yourself digging into the wood and that is well if, if that's the effect you're going for then fabulous but that's not what we're going for here so that's not what I'm going to do there we go so what we've got here in these little eyelets We've got some darker bits. So what I want to do is this spoon shader here um, instead of... Hang on. Give me a second just to poke the camera. There we go. So your spoon shader, I've been using it flat down. It's on its ball. Now what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm just going to twist it to the side. I'm going to use it on its edge just so we can get these little eyelets in here 
and then I'm going on to the tip just around that lace there we go and we're going to do the same all the way up so it's on its edge and then it's on the top of its tip just to go around and do that just a little bit more so Robert says what kind of machine or tool is that called this is a Peter Child's machine it's specifically made in the UK so you probably won't get one in Texas um, but I think the razor tip and the coal wood are pretty popular where you are and the Optima oh Optima yes I do have an Optima and it's a really 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 good machine so basically, it's a py py pyrography machine. Yeah. Or wood burning machine. Yeah. It's just temperature controlled. The temperature controlled ones are much easier to deal with. So this here, this particular mm. eyelid. They will. Well. They will burn on wood, paper, leather, bone. Cork. Cork. Quite a few materials. Yes, it does. <clears throat> Excuse me, voice. So what I'm going to do here is this this lace here is actually twisted as it goes into this eyelet. So what I'm going to do is bring the eyelet down and around how it should be. And then what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to just turn this down because this is on four and a half. I'm going to turn this down to a three just for a split second. I'm going to blow the tip just to cool it down. And the dark spreads upwards so we're just going to use that upward motion you just zoom yourself in a bit more so we can see what you're doing yeah sorry that's as far as it's going to go yeah so we've just gone here and we're just spreading the motion up because what it is is let me show you on here easy to show you on here oh so what we're doing is this this section here as you can see it is it's dark but it's not too dark so we're using the way that the tool burns to our advantage so we start in the dark and we spread up because it naturally gets lighter and that will now form where the twist is if we get it right Got to pray Kez gets it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it does go right. And as we saw in the last one, she doesn't always get it right. No, no, it doesn't. I don't always get it right, but I do show you how to correct it. So I'm just using the swinging motion. So you imagine a child on a swing, and when they swing one way, they put the drag their feet upwards and then when they swing backwards they drag their feet again so you imagine when a child would touch the floor with their feet you need to touch the wood with your pen but still keep it with the swinging motion backwards and forwards it just stops the um, nasty horrible burn blobs there we go Get that in there now. Move on to this one, this eye up here. So we've got the pen on its edge again, very, very gently, not um, a lot of pressure. Just bringing that around. That's it. We've got lots of dark coming down this section. So I'm just going to drag that down just because it's in a in a line and we'll drag it in a line it's just easier this piece of wood is behaving better than the last piece of wood when we did the portrait when we finished off the portrait last week um, the wood was not very nice on this side this one is doing much better thankfully there we go just dragging it down there's corrections to make um, 
Hopefully. <coughs> Hopefully. But as you see, you know, I, I mean, I do this. This is this is my work. Pyrography is my work. This is what I do. And you know, even professionals make mistakes. You know, and it's just showing you show you guys how to deal with them and not to get frustrated. Jacob says, I've no, I've said it a couple of times before. Only a couple. But I can watch this all day. <laughs> you're very talented. Thanks, Jacob. <laughs> oh, I'll turn this back up, actually. I'll put it back on four and a half. I was wondering why it wasn't burning quite so dark. I was wondering why this pen wasn't burning quite so dark. I'd got it, still got it on the number three from doing the eyelets. Or doing that lace bit there. It'd take me forever otherwise. Went on a tangent, didn't you? I did, I did. I did. Surprise, surprise. <sighs> Told you my brain forgets. It's terrible for forgetting. There we go. I think, actually, this pen needs a bit of a clean, so just give me a second. Just turn this off a minute. So I've just got a piece of polishing compound. Go up a bit on you. Let's see it. A piece of polishing compound and a bit of leather, furry side up. And we're just going to knock off the carbon and make this tip nice and shiny so it glides over the wood again. There we go. Might work now. All right. When you're doing lots of black work, you will find that you have to clean your tips more regular than if you're doing just, you know, sort of like your mid-tones and stuff like that. And don't worry about it. Just clean them. Keeping them clean keeps them nice and healthy, I suppose. I'm going to say healthy. Tip's not really healthy, I suppose, but... I can't think of a better word, and I'm not very technical. <laughs> it keeps it burning, is it, Sean? That, yeah, that's it. I knew somebody would help me. <laughs> you guys are used to me by now. Come on. Well, you should be after 20... How I'll, let, I'll let you answer this one. Go on now. What grip paper do you use to clean the tips? I don't use... Uh, a, I don't use paper. I use... Um, a piece of leather. I don't use paper because sandpaper is an abrasive and it is there to take material away. So no matter what grit you're using, you are taking material away. So you take the material off your tip. So you, every time you use a piece of sandpaper, you be, you're sanding your tip down. But if you use a piece of leather, um, it's soft enough and it knocks all the carbon off and still you end up with you can see the shine on that and it's not it was dark and black a minute ago so no sandpaper there we go just makes your tips last a lot longer and they're a lot smoother for when you're trying to get uh, smooth the shading burns. done yeah yeah absolutely Thank you for finishing my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So just adding in all these dark, because it's really, really dark here. This is still just a base layer going in on these really dark sections. What we will do is, um, as the weeks go on, we will add more to these sections. Yeah, Rob says, learn, mm, learning something new. A lot of learning today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every day's a learning day. Yeah, so as the, as the weeks go on, these sections will get darker, but they won't get darker in one big block. What we will do is where it, it, we will look at the different shadows because when you look at something that is black, it isn't truly black. 
when you look it depends on how the light hits something especially fabric so where the light hits it you will have lighter patches and darker patches and different shadows and things like that so we will look at that as the weeks go on this is what we're just plotting in the base layers today on this section this is not at its darkest it's just like, it's like, like the foundations make up for wood eh? <laughs> make up for wood <laughs> yeah something like that I was thinking more like the foundations when you're building a house not make up <laughs> we've got something wrong here love <laughs> I'm thinking about building and you're thinking about makeup. All right, a base layer for paint then. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we'll stick with that one. <laughs> you are funny. <laughs> when it filled us in his spare time. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm using a mixture of the swinging motion and the circular motions. Any particular reason for that? No, not really. Yeah, I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, no, there's no particular reason. It's just... I just thought you couldn't make up your mind what you were doing. Yeah, that probably, that's more likely it. Just use whichever technique that you're comfortable with, really. I know there are a few people that are following along. Um... So yeah, just just use whatever you are comfortable with. And Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft joined us. Hey up, Wayne, how you doing? Good afternoon. Sorry we're late. We've been in the garden working. That's all right. I don't blame you, mate. While the weather's good, you've got to get some progress done. Oh god, yeah. How's it coming along? Rob says it's crazy because tattooing and drawing pictures, everybody uses that half circle for shading in the drawing. Yeah. Yeah, they do, don't they? Especially with tattooing. Because it's the way that you, because of the way that you have to have the angle of the needle going into the skin. Because of it depositing in the next layer of skin, though, isn't it? So that ha that has to be obviously done in a certain way, doesn't it? Are you a tattooist then, Rob? And um, it says you're right. Yeah. With the angle. Yeah. Tattooing is something that um, I wanted to do when I was growing up. It was the job that I wanted. I just never got there. Are you tattoo wood instead? Yeah, it's only because you won't let me tattoo you. <laughs> <laughs> Promise will be nice. So... Very light pressure, still. Just sticking with the light pressure. You going to say something? I was waiting for the chat to move up. Oh, and then Rob says, no, I draw, but seeing it use that method in shading. A lot. <coughs> yeah. You've gone quiet on us, Missus. I am. I'm just. It was. I was trying to think of who it was. Who was it that um, looked it up? Because I was calling it. I call. I always call this motion scrumbling. Because when you when it's pencil work, it's called scrumbling. But in pyrography, it was called it, it was called scrambling, wasn't it? Mm. Who was it that found it? Alex. Alex, Alex, yeah. 
thought it was. Oh, uh, when well, so paving all done. Yeah. <coughs> need to do the concrete in the last sets of steps. Mm, I'm secretly nice. hoping it's raining tomorrow, so I can't do it. <laughs> so you can have a break. <laughs> oh, bless you, mate. Bless you. Oh, coming along nicely then. Just tiring, isn't it? Just tiring. So, although you've seen me just put a line in there, that is not a hard line because I've used the bottom of the bomb of the spoon shader, which means it comes out actually as a fuzzy line. which is really good for these. So back to the scrumbling. Yeah, Over Robert here. says, yes, there is uh, a couple of names for it, but now yeah. that's getting specific with the proper name for it, lol. Yeah, it is. It is. I would say. Um, I think it say it was Alex that looked it up last time, wasn't it? I believe on um, one of the lives we had an entire discussion over your did. technical terms. <laughs> we did. My technical terms are terrible. I could. I yeah. You know, I can. I can just about manage hatching, cross hatching, scrumbling, and stippling. And I pass that. Um. Yeah. That's it. I'm done. That's it for technical terms. Yep. I know what I'm doing because I'm doing it, and it it, it seems to work, but. The actual names, um, no. You've got Bob Hope, no Hope. Yeah, 56 minutes. Really? Wow, that's flown by. Didn't even touch the other shoe. I'm just still trying to put the base layers in on this bit. This, the darker sections do take the longest, obviously, because you've got to go darker. You can turn the machine up and go darker that way, but what happens is it leaves a very nasty yellow overburn. So where you've done your lines, it kind of got a, over, the, over the outside. It um, doesn't look very good at all. So we don't do that. We just keep it slightly lower, keep it on a lower temperature and build up the layers rather than just trying to go in with one pass. And there we go. This is still not going to be, this is still not as dark as it should be. But that's okay. You say we've just got an ugly duckling stage at the moment. Let's see if we can get this section in here. How long we got? What time is it? Oh, you've got a couple of minutes. Oh, let's see if we can get this section in. What do you reckon? There we go. Just getting it in. Getting this base layer in. So Robert says, why is that too much heat? Yeah, it is basically too much heat. I've got a, I've got a piece of wood here. I'll show you in a second. It just looks horrible. Well, I think it does anyway. If that's your, you know, your desired effect, then you know, by all means go for it. But um, it's definitely not something that I use for the particular style that I do. Yeah, for some applications it does work having yeah, that yeah, slight yellow in because it adds a dimension in. Yeah. Especially on darker woods. Yeah, but for realism I don't find that um, it's very good. So, just got this last little bit. You think we're going to make it? Yeah. <laughs> So we will darken these sections down quite considerably. There we go. What have we got time-wise? Right, so if I just 
take that out a second. So that's where we're at. That's probably where, well, that is where we're going to stay um, this week. So what I'm going to do is just show you that bit. So if I go out like this, just take this piece of wood here. Now I'm going to turn this up to a nine. You can see my tip is glowing. That is actually really bad for your tips. It lessens the life of your tip again. Um, I have had my tips for around five to six years because I've looked after them. Um, I lose them more often than I break them. What we're going to do here is show you if I put a line in here. There we go. Turn that off a second. What I'm going to do is show you. Can you see that yellow burn? It doesn't look so bad there, but actually on this piece of wood, it looks really, really bad. Um, that is not what you're looking for. And also because the tip is so hard, it's actually sunk into the wood just here. That's why it's slightly fatter. Well, going on that, uh, Robert had another question. Yeah. What wood do you prefer to use? Um, I, this is European lime. So where you are, it is basswood, or it's basswood is a is the version of it. It's, the lime is slightly denser than basswood, but they are, it's perfect for it. Um, I also like sycamore. I've used a bit of cherry recently. Um, beech, birch, poplar. Yeah, poplar. Um, yeah, there's lots of different woods. As long as it's a nice light wood and it's close grain, it's uh, easy to work with. Yep. The close grain just makes it easy to work with. If you're, if you're trying to burn on something like oak, um, that's a piece of ash. Yeah. Um, you could see all the grain lines in that. And what happens is, is that you've got the grain and you've got the pith. And then the pen, when it dips into the pith, it burns faster, so you end up with a hole in your wood. So, and then when you go over the grain, it goes, so you end up, you know, wavy. So, if you're choosing something, just choose something with a nice close grain. Say the basswood blanks are pretty easy to get hold of where, where you are. Um, not, some, not so easy here. They're quite expensive here, aren't they? Yeah, they are in comparison. Yeah, the country planks and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I mean, there we go. We've done a little bit of a shoe. So, but by the end of a few weeks, we will be getting towards that. So, ooh, breaking things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of me breaking things, I'm going to leave you right there. Um, I will see you again next Sunday at 4 p.m. Hopefully, we won't mess it up this time. Yeah, yeah. technical difficulties um, can go away. <laughs> politely um thank you everybody for joining me thank you for your questions and i will bid you oh one a good second day. oh sorry. robert says is that some of your work in the background oh yes yes that yes lots of lots of that one there is the one that we have just finished you want to bring that up yeah. while you're here as soon as you've got some new people that haven't been here before yeah so this one is um a picture of a little boy and this the, was the one that we've just finished. We spent 11 weeks on that one, didn't we? Yes. So that is on the YouTube channel. And that was the one that we did be, the time before. So that, that is the series before. And that one was 10, 10 weeks on that one. So we try and keep them around 10 weeks. Um, so you guys don't get so bored. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was uh, great to meet you guys. And great to have you with us. And we will see you again same time next week for another hour of fun. Yeah. See you soon, guys. Take care, Bye. Bye. <laughs>